Hello everyone and welcome back to the FIDE Women's World Chess Championship. This is game 5 and for those of you who are only joining us now, uh, do check out my previous video on the match on game 4 where I made a, a, a pretty pretty extensive uh, intro uh, about uh, the well about the entire event. It's some 6 minutes long so uh, I will not be repeating that uh, every game of the match. Do check it out and only then watch this game. So this game, uh, Lei Tingje has the white pieces. Even though I uh, said that Lei Tingje had the white pieces in the previous video, I messed that up. No, uh, Lei Tingje only has the white pieces in this game, game 5. And it takes a bit of a different turn than uh, when she played with the white pieces in game 1 and in game 3. Because here we have the exact same opening, e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but in game 1 and game 3, the games that were drawn, bishop to b5 was played. Uh, Lei Tingje went for the uh, Rui Lopez, but here she goes for the Italian game, bishop to c4. And I know what you guys are wondering, is this it? Is this the moment we see the Evans Gambit in a World Chess Championship match? Unfortunately, no. We have knight to f6, the two knights defense, and now pawn to d3 at the modern bishop's opening. We have bishop to c5, castles and pawn to d6 now. Uh, c3 and pawn to a5 and we've uh, already had this position in a world chess championship match in 2021 uh, magnus carlsen had this position against yanni pomnishi in game 11 of the world chess championship match where magnus played pawn to a5 and it's the game that magnus won very nicely with uh, the black pieces but nepo continued with rook to e1 rook to e1 is the main move uh here in this um, uh, configuration uh, but we have bishop to b3 sort of uh, mixing it up uh, trying to to confuse the uh, jew engine uh, we have castles and now rook to e1. We have bishop back to a7, also a standard move. Uh, h3 and now bishop to e6, countering the light square bishop on b3. And here there is a game where knight b to d2 was played, but we have bishop to c2. And it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So let's see uh, how Ju Engine continues this. We have pawn to h6, again, very, very standard stuff. Uh, and the immediate pawn to d4. Uh, Ju Engine captures gladly because now if c captures, then the knight can come to b4 but instead knight captures on d4 and just bishop back to d7 so here uh Ju Engine wants to move the knight uh, probably play c5 and position her bishop on this uh, uh, long diagonal so bishop to e3 we have knight to e5 now moving the knight we have knight to d2 and now pawn to c5 chasing away the knight from such a nice central square so knight back to f3 and now bishop to c6 nicely putting pressure on that e4 pawn uh, we have a trade knight captures on e5 D captures and now pawn to a4, stopping further expansion um, uh, from black uh, via moves like pawn to b5. Uh, we have queen to e7, developing the queen, connecting rooks, and uh, Lei Tingje does the same. She goes uh, queen to e2. We have rook f to d8, claiming the only open file on the board, and uh, Lei Tingje does the same, uh, but not rook a to d1, rook e to d1. We have bishop to b8, now b6 will be played to uh, strengthen the c5 pawn, and the bishop will uh, be very useful here, as uh, of course white, uh, white will definitely want to play a f4 at some point, but it's a very dangerous opening of the position like this because both of um, uh, them still have the bishop pair and if the position opens up wrongly for you you could be in a lot of trouble so queen to c4 putting pressure on that c5 pawn uh, and of course pawn to b6 we have pawn to b4 busting open the position on the queen side a capture c captures and now bishop to d6 adding more defense to the c5 pawn but now pawn to b5 and this is what uh, Lei Tingji wanted all along at some point she will play a5 which will either allow her to create a pass pawn by capturing on b6 or by advancing to a a6 or uh, if uh, b captures on a5 then uh, the b pawn will become a pass pawn so bishop back to d7 and now queen to c3 uh, with a very nice control over the a5 square. We have bishop to e6 now also stopping knight to c4, but uh, you're not really stopping it as white will, of course, play that. Knight to c4, and you can't really allow this knight to remain here. It's just a monster, so you have to capture it, and you have to give up your bishop pair. So bishop captures, we have queen captures, and now knight to e8, remaneuvering the knight to c7. Bishop to b3, nicely putting pressure on f7, so you also have to worry about that. Knight to c7, and now queen back to c 
uh, We have knight to e6, now the knight can come to d4, it's going to be a beautiful square for the knight, and bishop to d5. We have rook a to b8, now the rook can no longer remain here. Rook a to b8, uh, uh, well, just defending the b6 pawn, and now bishop captures an e6. Uh, you could play f captures, but then you have two really weak pawns on the e-file, that's not really something you want to do. So queen captures, and only now rook to d5, preparing to double up on the d-file. Uh, so bishop to e7, offering a trade of rooks, and just rook a to d1. So for the moment, postponing the advancement of the a-pawn, but you of course know that it is coming. Uh, rook captures on d5, we have rook captures on d5, and now rook to a8, which is a very interesting move. Uh, the problem with rook to d8 is that you can advance a5 right away, and there is really nothing black has to show for this. If b captures on a5, you will just trade here, captures, captures, and capture the c5 pawn, and now your b-pawn is already almost a queen, uh, the b6 square is guarded twice, uh, even if uh, you advance the pawns all the way, both players can get a queen, uh, but it's just much, much easier for uh, white, even though uh, black queens with check, Still, after king h2, your bishop is hanging, you have to play something like queen to d7, now you will put pressure, even more pressure on the bishop, and now after, let's say, captures and captures, you get this position, okay, it's equal material, bishops are of the same color, but uh, it will be late in who will uh, already have a passed pawn on d5, so maybe you can defend this, uh, it's not, uh, not uh, well, not as great, uh, so uh, rook to a a8 is definitely a better move, bishop to d2, now again, keeping an eye on the a5 square, and now king to f8, with with bishop to c3, now also putting pressure on the e5 pawn, and pawn to f6, so no worries there, we have queen to b3, now you have to again be worried, rook to d8 check will lose you the queen, so queen to c8, and now queen to c4, we have queen to e8, and now pawn to g3, uh, queen to c8, uh, Jew engine uh, with nothing to do, but to wait and see what happens here, okay, the h3 pawn has been weakened, so that is hanging, a king to g2 and now queen to e8 we have pawn to h4 pawn to h5 and now bishop back to d2 uh, we have rook to b8 uh, pawn to f4 busting open the position in the center e captures on f4 and now bishop captures on f4 uh, grabbing even more space here so the rook cannot remain there rook to b7 was played and now queen to e2 uh, beautiful uh, square for the queen not only is it preparing e5 but also she wants to uh, a capture the pawn on h5 if the queen ever moves. So g6 strengthening the h5 pawn, uh, but now you've kind of weakened the df6 pawn. So pawn to e5 right away definitely makes sense. The black king is uh, not as safe as the white king. So queen to a8. Now again, you have to be very careful. If you if you if you play e captures on f6, it's just a force to draw uh, because there is a move like rook to d7 and the queen is on the same diagonal as the king. And now even if f captures on e7, check you just move the king, and now you're gonna lose the rook on the next move and that's sufficient for a draw so instead after queen to a8 uh, uh after this uh, queen to a8 move such a move was not played uh there is uh, in fact only one move that wins you the game and it's not uh, an easy one to spot so feel free to pause the video and win the game for lating j uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this as uh, this is a really difficult move to find. You have to put even more stuff on the exact same diagonal. So look at this diagonal. It's uh, really crowded. You have to put even more stuff there. Queen to f3 is the only move that wins. This is what Lei J played. And now the problem is uh, Ju Wenjun is without a move. What do you play here? Uh, the problem is, let's say you play uh, a queen captures on a4, because if you can capture this pawn, of course you want to do it, you do not want to see a5 on the board. The problem is rook d2. Now you block all of the checks, and also you are threatening the rook on b7. Once the queen defends or the rook moves, doesn't really matter, bishop to h6 check. And after king g8, e captures on f6. Uh, and okay, the bishop is now attacked after the bishop moves, you can even play f7 with check, and uh, the rook cannot capture because the queen would hang on a8, and now if king to h8, now you just play bishop captures and you're down a piece, of course the queen cannot capture, as then the rook on b7 hangs, so everything just falls apart. So after this queen to f3 move, uh, Ju Wenjun tried pawn to f5, keeping the position closed, but now this is a beautiful passed pawn, so rook to d7, again, you cannot capture as the queen would hang, uh, rook to a 
offering a queen trade and now a uh, queen captures on a8. Here there, there's a much quicker way to win. It's actually bishop to h6 check. And after the king moves, doesn't really matter where, you will play rook captures on a7. Now the queen has to capture, otherwise you're just down a rook. So queen captures and now uh, you play e6 and that's it. You've taken away pretty much all of the squares from the black king. You can play queen to c6 check. You can play some like queen to c3 to h8. Like everything is winning here. So after rook to a7, queen captures on a8 was played. It's uh, you know, it's uh, a different path to victory, but it's still it's still winning. Uh, rook captures an eight, and now pawn to e6. So she prefers to win in an endgame rather than uh, with queens on the board. And now rook captures on a4. Now the problem is there are a couple of moves to consider here. Pawn to c4 is a, is a very nice one because it uh, kind of offers counterplay for black, and we are going to discuss it. For example, rook b7. Of course, you have to eliminate the b6 pawn. Bishop to c5. You stop that. Now comes bishop up to h6 check king to g8 you will deliver one more check king h8 rook to c7 and now after let's say king to g8 or something because you don't want your king in the uh, in the corner uh, now bishop to d2 and it's really hard for black to find the move uh, the rook can't really go anywhere the bishop has to remain here guarding this pawn uh, the bishop is coming to this diagonal it's going to be really hard for black to defend and if you try something like rook here to go after the pawn then even rook to c6 you just defend it and when you play something uh, now a5 is the threat of course this will be impossible because the bishop hangs uh, but once you move the bishop even bishop to f4 now let's say pawn to c3 you will play pawn to a5 captures and pawn to b6 and that's it there's no uh there's no defending this position, just the b7, b8, and that's it. The b8 square is covered by the bishop. So after this e6 move, we have rook captures on a4. Juvenjun tries this instead. And now rook to b7. Going after the b6 pawn, we have rook back to a8. And now rook captures on b6. Now, uh, Leiting J has two uh, pass pawns. But okay, c4. Juvenjun also has one. We have rook to c6. And now bishop to d8. Interestingly, uh, Juvenjun had uh, zero time on the clock here. She basically... Uh, uh, allowed her clock to go down all the way and then she played the move uh, on the last second pretty much uh, to, to gain more time so it was uh, very, very intense uh, pawn to b6 we have rook to a2 with check and now king to f3 we have rook to b2 and now rook to c8 uh, the bishop is pressured, so you have to defend the bishop, but there is no good way to do it. Rook to b3, check. King to e2, and now uh, what was played is rook captures on b6, giving up the bishop on d8. There's no way to defend it. If you try to defend it, bishop g5, and that's it. There's... Uh no uh no way to actually do it so instead rook captures on b6 was played giving up the bishop for a couple of pawns rook captures on d8 check king to e7 and now rook to c8 going after the c4 pawn and now rook captures uh, of course on e6 with check king to d2 and rook to e4 defending the pawn so now okay you do have two pawns for the bishop but of course that's not gonna last king to c3 uh king f7 and of course rook captures on c4 so, you know, if you trade rooks, of course, it's game over. So you have to keep the rooks on the board. You could easily resign here. But, uh, you know, I think that you should always uh, uh, give your opponent uh, as many uh, possibilities to make a mistake a a as, you know, humanly possible. Some would say that it's disrespectful. You should resign. I, I don't agree. I think that your, your opponent, if he can win, he should prove that he can win. And, uh, you know, just uh, play the game. If your opponent wants to play, uh, th there's no reason for him to resign. Uh, so here, rook to c7 with check. Uh, sorry about that. Someone is uh, uh, calling me. Uh, I will answer it later. Uh, rook king to f6 with bishop to g5 with check. King to e5 and now rook to e7 with check. Finally forcing a trade of rooks and uh, that's pretty much it. Rook captures, bishop captures. And he was in this position on move 65 that uh, Ju Wenjun resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So game five goes to Leiting J and she takes the uh, first win. She draws first blood and now it is up to uh, Ju Engine to, to retaliate in order to uh, get the uh, ma match going in her favor. Uh, one more uh, game will be played in, in her hometown, then they are switching places. So, you know, if, um, if, uh, if there's a time to strike, uh, it would definitely be in game six. And game six has a very special place uh, in the history of the World Chess Championships. So yeah, we will see what happens there for those of you who are maybe new to chess and don't know how this game would play out uh, well it's uh, kind of very simple uh, I mean white is up a piece let's say a king to e4 uh, bishop to g5 and if you try to snap
knight your pawn, bishop to f4. And now everything is defended. The king can touch anything. You cannot push g5. It's nicely defended. So obviously that uh, that that uh, can be played. And if you try to just you know uh, hold everything, just uh, you know. Uh, say I'm not going to go forward, but you can't go forward either. It's actually very simple to play this. We're going to play bishop to g5 and slowly uh, bring our king up the board. Of course, the black king will try to prevent this, but we're going to play king d3, king to e5, king to c4, king to e6, now king to d4. If king to d6, we just kick him away. King goes here. We're going to play king to c5, king to f6, king to d6, and slowly but surely push the black king into the corner. At some point, black will have to push a pawn, and if black prolongs this and doesn't want to do this, uh, then black might even get checkmated. Look at this. King f7, bishop to g5, king to g7, king to e7, king to g8. Now we're going to play bishop to f6, force the black king into the corner, king h7, king f7, and after king to h6, you will play bishop to e5, sort of wasting a move, and if black still doesn't want to start giving up pawns, play, place king to h7, now you stalemate him, but only, uh, you know, not for real, because, you know, of course, black can still push those pawns, and now after f4, you will capture, after g5, you will capture, and now after h4, you will just deliver a beautiful pawn to g6 checkmate, so even this is possible. Uh, but yeah, very nicely done by Leiting J, taking the first uh, win in the tournament, we'll see what happens um, uh, in the match, we'll see what happens in the rest of the games, uh, hope uh, to see many more uh, clashes like this. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, very nicely done again by, by Leighton J. Uh, I would like to thank James Eugene Cashman, Brad Roth, uh, Michael Marshall, uh, BulletChestThriller.com, and Gabriel Montenegro for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this uh, uh, event uh, and checking up uh, on your wonderful suggestions and everything else that's happening in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.